Howdy folks, how are y'all doing? Cub here and welcome back to my guide to Tekkit Legends. Today we're delving into the mod of Zeta Industries, a really neat mod that adds some pretty cool stuff like some different backpacks and this RF meter and a quarry pick, lots of really cool things. The, the variable redstone emitter, I mean some of this stuff is just really incredible but probably the number one thing that people will install this mod for is the big battery and unfortunately there's not a whole lot of great documentation about it. So today I'm going to show you what I have learned using this big battery in my own Let's Play series. And if you want to take a look at that, I'll link to the first episode of my 50 plus episode Tech It Legends Let's Play. Now in this video, we're only going to look at stuff that's included in Zeta Industries for the big battery. So if you're playing in something besides Tech It Legends, don't worry, this will all apply to you as well. Now I've got a regular pool of water, a 3 by 3 so 9 blocks of water right here that I'm trying to keep from freezing up. So occasionally you might see me come over here and break some ice, but don't worry about that. We'll come back to that in a minute. The first thing you're going to want to do to build the smallest battery possible, which believe me, unless you have a big reactor, this is all you need right here. You're going to need to build some battery walls. Now the recipe for battery walls, they're not cheap. You get four of them, but they require three obsidian, two blocks of gold, a diamond, and three blaze powder. Now this isn't so bad if you have EMC, as you can see, 46,000 EMC. Assuming you have a lot of it, you can get quite a few of them. But you are going to need a lot of them. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to create a 5 by 3. So 3 by, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 floor. And again, this is how you build the smallest one. You have some other options here. And then you're going to build this up. Now, right now we're using battery walls. We could use battery glass, which is about as expensive. As you can see, you have to take a battery wall. So you already have to make the battery wall anyway, surround it with glass. You can make the entire structure out of that, or you can just add it in various places. But... I'm going to build the whole structure structure out of battery wall. So we've got our bottom and then we're going to create a giant U on top. So as you can see, we've got a three by five bottom. And then on top, we've got all the outer walls filled in except for these on the outside. We're not going to mess with those just yet. Now in the middle, we're going to place down our electrodes. Electrodes are important. Electrodes are what allows us to put power, put power in and take power out. All right, so we got the two of those placed. We're going to build another layer up top, so more battery walls. There we go. Now electrodes, I should have showed you the recipe for that. It's two gold, and then you're going to surround that with graphite. Now because we have the big reactors mod installed, we could use graphite from big reactors, but the actual graphite that's included in Zeta Industries is made by taking a block of charcoal and smelting it. And a block of charcoal is just nine charcoal. And no, that's not vanilla, that is added in Zeta Industries. So get some charcoal, make it into a block of charcoal, smelt that block of charcoal, you'll get some graphite. All right, so we've got our two electrodes. Now on top of the electrodes, we're going to take our power taps, and you build power taps like so. It's, you're going to need a redstone comparator, you're going to need some obsidian, a block of redstone, we're going to need more battery walls, a block of graphite, and we already talked about that, and then some blaze powder. You're going to need two of them, one to put power in and one to pick, take power out. And they do have to be on top of the electrodes, and they do have to be on top of the battery. You can't put power in or take power out of the sides or the bottom of the big battery, it has to be on the top, okay? Now, anywhere you want to, I'm gonna put it dead center on the front here, but anywhere you want to, you're gonna to have to place down your battery controller, and the recipe, it's just a redstone lamp, a block of redstone, some blaze powders. As you can see, all these recipes just require some vanilla items, along with the battery wall, which is just more vanilla items. So, you could just install this and use it all by itself, but since this big battery stores RF energy, you're gonna want something that produces RF energy like a big reactor or anything from, I guess, uh, build craft, I suppose, or thermal expansion, you know, anything that produces that type of energy. We're gonna place our battery controller up here on the front and let's go ahead and use some battery glass. We'll put battery glass side of the side here just to show you it works. And then we're gonna add some more battery walls up to the top. Now this is why we need the little pool of water. We have to put what's called, and I'm gonna look at it, sulfurous acid right in the middle here, and that's what's actually going to be technically storing our energy. And in order to get it, what you have to do is you gotta build a block of sulfur, which is either, if you have railcraft installed, a bit of sulfur and some gunpowder. If you don't have railcraft installed, some blaze powder and a piece of gunpowder. You're gonna place that, good grief, into the middle of a pool, and you're going to light it on fire using some flint and steel. It's going to burn for a little while, and then when it's finally done, it should convert all of the water in this pool into our sulfurous acid, and it can take a little while. I'm not sure of the exact time, 
But if we just wait patiently, there it goes. So we now have eight sulfurous, and we're gonna need a bucket, aren't we? Let's go ahead and we'll grab just a generic bucket, and I am playing in creative, so I could have just grabbed it, but you know what, for the sake of tutorial, we'll go ahead and scoop us out some. Where is it gone? I do not know. Does this have to do with me being in creative mode? Hmm. Well, if you're not in creative mode, that will work. We're gonna go ahead and just grab a bucket of it anyway. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna fly up here and we're going to place it right in the center here between the two electrodes. And this does have to be touching the electrodes. And now when we place our final battery wall, there we go, the battery will assemble itself. And as you can see, if we right click on our controller, we can store 150 MRF. And I believe that stands for Mega RF. This will hold a lot of energy, take my word for it. Now the question you might have is, how do I make it store more power? Well, you just make it bigger. This is the smallest one you can build, 5x3. If we bumped it out a bit, we could make it bigger, we could add some more acid, and we could make it hold a lot more energy. Now, as for putting energy in, you'll see we have a battery tap here and a battery tap here. Remember, we put those on top of our electrodes. They're both positive. In order to change that, what we're going to do is we're going to right-click it with a bare hand. And you can see we can, oh, I'm sorry, shift right-click it. I'll set it to negative. So positive to put power in, negative to take power out. And you can pick how much power goes in and out by right-clicking again with the bare hand and selecting how much RF you want it to receive. So right now, the maximum is 2,500. The reason for that is that it, um, how do I explain this? So the more sulfurous acid you have touching the electrode, the more power these things can receive and output. So if we wanted to receive more than 2,500 RF per tick, we'd have to have more sulfurous acid touching the electrode. So how would we do that? Well, let's go ahead and break our structure here since we've already done that anyway. Let's go ahead and make sure we have some more acid on hand. And we're gonna just build this out a little bit. There we go. And fill all of this in. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna break all of this and we're going to fill it with sulfurous acid. Now I should go ahead and say the only things you can put inside of your Zeta Industries big battery is the electrodes and the acid. If you try to put a piece of, let's say, battery wall inside of here, when you assemble it, it will not reassemble. You cannot put battery wall inside of it, you cannot put glass inside of it. It has to be either the sulfurous acid or the battery electrode. Now, when you finish it up, if we right click here, you'll see we can now go up to 5,000 RF per tick. Well, we could take it up another step. I don't believe, and this is where I'm about to get schooled if I'm wrong, I don't think we actually have to have the acid directly touching the electrode. I think we might be able to just build out the wall some, and we'll give this a try, and if I'm wrong, we'll all know here in a second. But if we just build out the wall a bit, and we fill in some more of this back here, let's see if that actually increases our rate. And if it doesn't, I'll be wrong and we'll all know it. But <laughs> let's go ahead and make sure we get that filled. There we go. Okay, I was wrong. Yeah, so it does actually have to be touching the electro. So you see, we built out some more. We got nothing. We could do, though, if we could put some in here and we could put that back on there. And right in the center here, you'll see we don't actually have to have, in fact, let's go ahead and break all of these. And I'll show you that again. We don't have to have any, I mean, we do have to have one, either battery tap or input or output. So we do have to have at least one of those on the top. And right now it can input or output a maximum of 10,000 RF per tick because it's surrounded on all sides by our sulfurous acid. And I guess that is the maximum you could go unless you can get some acid on top of this. Now, how would you do that? Well, that's gonna be a bit tricky because you're going to have to break and place as you go around. There we go. And then you got to get some in the middle there. And then I guess we place another electrode. And I'm not sure if they have to be stacked like that. See, now we've gotten to a point where I haven't properly researched this, and now I'm learning things. But let's see what happens if we go ahead and we fill all this in. Yep, battery assembles, and... 20,000 RF per tick. Yeah, so you can stack the electrodes. We have two of them stacked now. And continue to just build upward if you want to. And you'll be able to input or output more and more power. Now, playing in Tech at Legends, the maximum amount of power you can transfer would be through a diamond transport pipe. And if we take a look at that, you'll see the diamond kinesis pipe can only transfer 10,240 RF per tick. So we're at about our maximum with 20,000 here. We can't really top that. If you're playing in a different mod pack, though, and you have different ways to move EMS... Oh, hold on a second. I just thought about something else here we could do. 
In Tech at Legends, if we look up Kinesis pipes, or I guess in this case, power teleporting pipes, I have yet to find a limit for power teleporting pipes. I've yet to find out if there's a limit to how much they could move. So theoretically, you could use the power teleporting pipe, keeping in mind that there is a 10% power loss going from one to another. But if you have a big reactor, you can just plop one of those in there and one of those on here. And again, theoretically, well, no, because you have to, you can't simply put a power teleporting pipe on top of here. You have to have a diamond pipe. So no, I guess not. All of that theory out the window. But there you go, folks. That's how you build it. And again, you could replace any of these battery walls with glass and, and they'll work just fine. If you want to look inside there and check out the magic as it's happening. Hopefully video, you folks have found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments what else you want to see covered in my Tech at Legends guides. And you know what? Till next time, thank you all for watching. God bless you and I'll see you later. Bye.